Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Derek Campbell. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a medication known as Captopril or Capoten. Now, before I get into the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. In this video, we'll discuss the mechanism of action or how this medication works, indications or reasons we would prescribe Captopril to a patient, followed by contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe this medication. We'll then discuss examples of dosing and then follow it up with side effects. I put together some slides to go over this information, so let's just jump right into it. So the first thing to discuss here would be the mechanism of action or how this medication works. But Captopril inhibits angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE. It is believed to lower blood pressure by suppression of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Inhibition of ACE blocks the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. This causes a decreased vasopressor activity and decreased aldosterone secretion. Captopril may also interfere with the degradation of the vasodepressor peptide bradykinin. In terms of indications or reasons we would prescribe Captopril to a patient, we may see it used in hypertension or high blood pressure, as well as in a hypertensive crisis. Patients with congestive heart failure may use this medication, as well as patients with diabetic nephropathy in patients with type 1 diabetes and nephropathy. Left ventricular cardiac dysfunction after a heart attack may also be treated with Captopril. With respect to contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe this medication, we wouldn't give this medication to a patient who had a hypersensitivity to Captopril, any other component of the formulation, or other ACE inhibitors. Use with alaskirin in diabetic patients is not recommended. It also should not be used with naprisline inhibitors such as Secubitril. A history of angioedema related to therapy with an ACE inhibitor in the past, um, you would also not use this medication in that situation. Now for some examples of dosing, so in the treatment of hypertension or high blood pressure, the initial dose would be 25 milligrams orally two or three times daily. They may increase the dose to 50 milligrams orally two or three times daily after one to two weeks. However, some patients may need to titrate their dose every 24 hours based on their condition. The usual maintenance dose would be 25 to 150 milligrams orally two or three times daily, and the usual maximum dose would be 450 milligrams per day. In the treatment of left ventricular cardiac dysfunction after a heart attack, the initial dose would be 6.25 milligrams orally for one dose, starting as early as three days after the heart attack, then 12.5 milligrams three times daily. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using Captopril, so I'll go over some of those here now. Some patients may experience hyperkalemia, up to 11% in this case. A cough may happen 0.5 to 2% of the time. Some patients may experience a rash or a disorder of taste, as well as hypotension or low blood pressure. Two serious side effects would be intestinal angioedema or Stevens-Johnson syndrome. All right, everybody, that's all we're going to talk about today with Captopril or Capotin. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. But for today, take care.